playoffs are almost over, and you know what that means. Free agency season. Yes. In fact, things are shaping up to look quite interesting this time around. In this video, we're going to go over a handful of players that are current pending UFAs and ponder one of the best potential destinations for them. Keep in mind, this is just for fun. I'm definitely not saying I'm 100% right. Just a person that enjoys making content that entertains. And with that, here are five pending UFAs and where they could end up. The last time we discussed Dougie Hamilton, who will be a prime target this offseason, we pondered the potential of Hamilton signing with Therefore, since we've already covered one team that has a significant need for his services, let's throw in another who is just about as thin on the back end. After losing names such as Dustin Bufflin and Jacob Truba from their roster, the Jets have been searching for a solution. While they did pick up Jordy Ben from last deadline, they haven't acquired a top caliber D-man that they've been lacking on the first pairing. Now the obvious issue with Hamilton and the Canes is simply cost, as Hamilton, who probably knows what he's worth, is probably going to look for close to Alex Petrangelo money, around 8 to 8.5 million AAV most likely, for his future contract. Now, the thing about most teams with the current cap, they're only going to be able to offer so much, but Winnipeg, if willing, could very well offer Hamilton what he's truly worth financially. With around 20 million projected in cap space to work with, Hamilton, who would definitely slot in alongside Josh Morrissey, could provide some structure and stability while potentially taking the lead on the power play. After Boston exited the postseason, David Krejci was asked about his future in Boston, and his thoughts at the time weren't exactly what you'd call assuring. As the forward was quoted saying, I just don't know right now. Krejci, who's been a Bruin since being drafted by the B, 33rd overall, in 2004, has most likely played his final game for Boston. The 35-year-old, despite a slower start to the season, had a better end to the campaign than beginning, after the addition of Taylor Hall. Even though the forward was able to finish strong with 44 points in 51 games played, Krejci will still not be able to command another 7 million again, likely in his career, as he has just come off a six-year $43 million deal and interestingly was the highest paid on the Bruins' books last campaign. Therefore, as the perfection line continues to age and Taylor Hall potentially resigning, Don Sweeney has some big decisions to make. With lots of younger options hitting the market, it's possible that number 46 will be searching for a new team here shortly, and one potential landing spot for the Vets could be in the Twin Cities, as the Wild have been have had some definite questions surrounding the second line center position for quite some time, since Paul Fenton decided to, you know, trade for Victor Rask with Kirill Kaprizov reportedly not content with Rask as his center. If the Wild can't land a bigger name such as Jack Eichel for the top line, then they might have to lowball a little and go for a guy like Krejci who would be cheaper and would provide Stanley Cup experience. Signing the center to a one-year deal valued at $5 million wouldn't be out of Minnesota's price range considering. As I alluded to previously, nothing is set in stone as of late for Taylor Hall to remain in Beantown. Sure, a player can say they want to be there, they like it, etc, etc, those statements can only go so far. With that being said, Colorado's captain's contract talks have to be of concern for Avs fans at this point in time. With his 7-year, $39 million deal expiring, Gabriel Landeskog will be most likely wanting a raise this offseason. After close to a point-per-game season last campaign, with 52 points and 54 games played, Landeskog, who is in his prime could very well look elsewhere this July. One team that could offer something reasonable is Boston. If Taylor Hall is off the books and, and Krejci is given a cheaper deal or otherwise replaced, the Bruins would definitely be able to better accommodate the Swede financially. Potentially offering up $7 million a season might just be enough to secure some second-line flair offensively. Landis Gog, who is known for his gritty physical style of play and leadership abilities, would fit in nicely with the B. As I mentioned previously, this video is literally just for fun, so despite the fact that Ovechkin could very well remain in DC, I thought it would be, you know, for the sake of entertainment, neat to take a look at a team that could potentially be a nice fit for the captain. With that being said, if the Caps and Ovechkin have to part ways, one interesting destination that could work is Florida. Why? Well, if the forward is looking to 
continue making similar money, the Panthers could give it to him as they currently have the space to do so. And on the flip side, I think it was apparent this postseason that the team was in need of something more. A great team, sure, that has lots of talent, but when you look at the roster, there's not really a bona fide star, or even a pure goal scorer for, for that matter. But imagine if the Panthers did entice number 8 and he began playing alongside the Panthers captain in Alex Barkov. Barkov, who may not be as supreme of a passer as Backstrom, still plays an immaculate two-way game at center that recently earned him the Selkie. Having a player alongside Ovechkin who is defensively aware could greatly benefit his game and allow for a potent first line on ice. The team, who will again be looking to get past the first round, could greatly benefit from Ovechkin's services if the opportunity presented itself. So, if Dougie Hamilton doesn't end up as a flyer, then it means that Philly will still be looking for a top pairing defenseman to play alongside Ivan Provorov for next season. And with the recent Ryan Nugent Hopkins extension being signed, it's pretty obvious at this point that the writing is on the wall for Barry. Now, it could go either of two ways for number 22. Either Holland decides to load up on picks for the draft and trades his negotiating rights, or he decides to let Barry walk instead. Either way, Barry could not only help on the power play, which finished 18th last season league-wide, but also could give Philly some needed supplemental scoring. In my opinion though, even though Barry could very well end up as a flyer, considering other names such as Seth Jones and Dougie Hamilton that will be out there, Barry would probably be one of those better-than-nothing choices, considering the fact that the team is in need of a more balanced defenseman. But even still, the guy can eat minutes and accumulate points with ease, so if Chuck Fletcher wants to invest elsewhere in the lineup, Barry would be a cheaper option for the back end. Maybe not the long-term solution, but an option at that. But according to the Edmonton Journal, the team is already viewing either Barry or Larson as a potential answer for the top pairing. So maybe not the best in some regards, but they're still entertaining the idea. 